Jason Victor, I L A I T I S. Um, I'm accompanied by Robin Liddell, who's um, to my right, and we are here on behalf of the people of the state of Michigan. Thank you. Good morning, Judge Matt Newberg, on behalf of uh, Lawrence Nasser, standing to my left, P71692. And good morning, Your Honor. I'm Shannon Smith, on behalf of Lawrence Nasser, P68683. And the defendant is standing next to you? Yes. Sir, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under penalty of perjury? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. You may have a seat. Before we begin with this motion, we had a discussion earlier in regard to my uh, raising the issue of any conflict this court may have based on my daughter, who now works for Michigan State doing their public relations. Um, she and I don't discuss cases. We have never have. She doesn't like what I do particularly. Doesn't want to know about the crime in this community. But nonetheless, um, she worked for Golan Harris for, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 years. A PR firm in Chicago and Michigan State wooed her to work for them. And so uh, she is, I believe, heading their um, public relations department, but this is a criminal matter and I have handled many matters where Michigan State's been involved and there's been no conflict. I can be fair and impartial. I don't think that's a conflict, but I left it up to counsel to discuss that with your client and uh, both clients, and um, we need to talk about that. Additionally, I also disclosed that I teach at the law school, and uh, again, I've never had a conflict. I've even done some things that involved complaints against them. I haven't had a conflict. I don't believe there's one here, but I need to ask all of you on behalf of the people, are you asking me to be removed based on any conflict that you see? Judge, on behalf of the people, I do not. Thank you for that information. Uh, we will not be pursuing that at this time, but thank you. On behalf of defendant. Your Honor, Your Honor, on behalf of defendant Nasser, we do not believe you have a conflict, and we are not asking that the court recuse itself. All right. Thank you. May I inquire? Would you like to inquire with your client? Yes, please. All Can right. you just stand for one sure. second? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and state your name quickly for the record. Lawrence Gerard Nassar, and I have no complaints with you being a judge for the case. Okay, and so I have provided uh, as full and fair disclosure as I can, and I just wanted to make sure you're okay with that. Yes, I am. And no one forced, threatened, or coerced you? No one has. No one promised you anything to make that decision? No, all right, thank you. Have you taken any medication today or yesterday? Uh, I took you don't have to tell me what you took. I don't want to know that. Yeah, Did you take anything? Just last night. Okay. And you're feeling okay today, sir? Yes, I am. And counsel, you've had an opportunity to speak with your client. Do you believe he's oriented to date, time, and place, and does understand what's occurring and what we've discussed? Yes, Judge, absolutely. All right. Thank you. Then we'll proceed. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. All right. So that brings us to the <coughs> emergency motion to limit public disclosure by witnesses and counsel for witnesses. Um, who would like to? May I? Thank you. Thank you. Um, Judge, the defense filed a lengthy motion. It was the emergency motion to limit public disclosure by witnesses and counsel for witnesses. And we set forth many of the facts that are creating an atmosphere that is lending itself to be a mob mentality in this community and making it so that Nasser cannot get a fair jury and have due process at his trial. And doing so by contaminating the jury pool with information that should not be within the jury pool at this time. We have cited to the fact that this court does have jurisdiction over this matter as the judge presiding on one of Dr. Nasser's cases. There are other cases with other witnesses. However, all of the cases overlap through the use of MRE 404B 
And really, all of these cases blend together, including the civil cases in this matter. The defense has made efforts to get the civil lawyers who are creating these issues to stop. We have specifically reached out to lawyers. For example, my office reached out to Jamie White, asked him to stop, and he did. Some of the lawyers have been cooperative and have been fair. There are some lawyers, however, who will not cooperate and will not be fair on this issue. And they are ignoring our request to stop behaving in the way they, they are behaving. And in fact, one lawyer, Middleman, wrote last night on Facebook that he stands behind all of his posts. It is for this reason that the defense has to ask the court to step in and take control of the witnesses in these cases, in this case, and the attorneys representing those witnesses. And we have proposed a more narrowly tailored order than what we originally asked for in the motion to ask for some specific orders of this court to address the concerns and make it so Dr. Nasser can have a fair trial in this community by a jury of his peers. We are specifically asking the court not to do anything in terms of eliminating the media or curtailing the media. We are not asking this court to prohibit lawyers from posting on Facebook or sharing articles. We are only asking that the inappropriate posts and statements stop. And therefore, specifically, we have proposed an order that states that there will be no attempts by any lawyer or witness to facilitate the release of information or statements to third parties that pertain to facts of the case which are not in the court file. We have asked the court to order that any statement released to any third party by a witness or a lawyer for a witness be a direct quote without elaboration so that the statements are contained in pleadings and specifically that the lawyers or witnesses cite which pleadings they come from. We have asked the court to order that no statements of the witnesses or the lawyers shall discuss the guilt or innocence of Nasser. No statements by the witnesses or lawyers shall discuss or comment on the strengths and weaknesses of the case. We've asked the court to order that no witnesses or lawyers shall comment as to the truthfulness of the lawyers involved in this case. And similarly, no witnesses or lawyers should vouch or comment on the credibility of witnesses involved. We've also requested that the court order that Dr. Nasser be referred to by his name or as defendant to preclude witnesses and lawyers from referring to him as a monster, a serial pedophile, predator, all of the other terms that some of these lawyers are using. We have asked that this order be binding upon all the parties, the current and potential witnesses for this case, and counsel for all of the current and potential witnesses. We have asked the court to allow us to provide notice of this order to the attorneys and the witnesses. We would ask that the Attorney General notify the witnesses they know about um, in order to provide notice. Mr. Newberg and I will provide notice to all of the civil lawyers we are aware of. We will not reach out directly to their clients because they are represented by counsel. And Your Honor, this order is necessary, and it's the only way this court can balance the First Amendment rights of the people involved with Dr. Nasser's right to a fair trial and due process. Thank you. Thank you. Response. Hi. Just briefly, Your Honor, um, I want to thank you for giving me the time to consult with my office and supervisors regarding this new proposed language. At this time, Your Honor, um, we cannot sign that order. Um, it is the defense's motion. We take no position and we defer to the court. Thank you. Thank you. The court has great concerns over the postings on social media. I think overall in Ingham County we have very responsible media in all forms. But this case has gone beyond our borders and all sorts of things are happening. As you all know, it's been highly publicized, I believe in open courtrooms. 
much to the dismay of some. And I'll continue to have an open courtroom. However, this is always balanced. It has to be balanced with the right of a fair trial to both sides. That is our American system of justice. We cannot ignore it. I will not ignore it. The Constitution is there for a reason. It protects all people. It protects the victims. It protects defendants. In this America, defendants are innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. I am frightened not just for a defendant, but also for the victims here with the, what's been coined as the mob mentality. I do not want opinions to be cemented into people's minds before there's been evidence. Evidence that comports with the rules the Supreme Court has given us. No offense to the media, but the media reports what people say. In this courtroom, what people say sometimes is called hearsay or is irrelevant. We have rules to abide by. The media does not. And that's a great thing for the media because they are our watchdogs and they uncover a lot of misdeeds. So I don't fault them for that. But we're not doing that here. We don't have the media's jobs. We have one of justice. Justice cannot be served if we can't get a clean jury. That's a problem. We need a fair and impartial jury. I don't know how we're going to get one if this continues as it has been. We have already sealed some of the records because they have had the names of the victim or the name of this victim in particular, which shouldn't have been. As far as I know, as far as that transcript, only one was requested and paid for from Judge Boyd's court reporter. How the others got disseminated, those were illegally disseminated. That is the property of the court reporter. Each and every transcript needs to be paid for. So those transcripts should not have been disseminated. That's a problem. It's not necessarily my problem until it touches this case. And it appears that those transcripts that have been copied are inciting problems. They're being discussed. How does that relate? Again, how do I get a fair and impartial jury? It's a problem. So, I have only briefly looked at this order, and it makes sense to have some kind of limitation without completely stepping on freedom of speech because that will not be upheld and I don't want to simply spin my wheels only to get squashed by the appellate courts. This has to make sense for both sides. For fairness and justice, which is what we're about in our system of justice. And in this case, so let me just go through the order. One, there shall be no attempts by any lawyer representing a witness or a witness to facilitate the release of information or statement to any third party that pertains to the facts of the case which are not already contained in a public court file. 
I'm wondering if we need to add that it would directly relate to this file. Your Honor, I think the problem is, is that all of the files end up overlapping because the commentary overlaps into all of these cases. And the prosecution identified that they're going to be, they're still identifying 404B witnesses, which may be witnesses from the medical case. So I think it's important that the court not limit it only to this file, but do a little bit of a broader order, only because Nasser is the subject of all of these cases. But that's the civil case, right? No, there's another criminal case, which which okay. ultimately will end up in this courtroom. Okay. Should so, it be bound over? Then it should be this case and any subsequent criminal case. Because we don't have, do we have those file numbers? I don't know. Again, I'm trying to stay, I'm not reading everything, I don't go digging for anything, I'm waiting for it to hit my file. I also need to be fair and impartial. I, we don't object to the civil lawyers and the witnesses talking about what's in public civil files either, because that is a part of the civil record. So we, we don't object to that. I don't think it's necessary to restrict them from that, unless the court finds it is. Here's the problem. We're lawyers. We play word games. I don't want word games. Okay. I was in practice too long, and if I uh, looked at this, I'd find a way around it, perhaps, or I would go and appeal it, perhaps, saying it was overbroad. I just want it to relate to this file or any other criminal, because ultimately they will come under my jurisdiction as far as I understand it. I'll have all the, fi the files since I have this one. So, and if it's 404B, then if it, it would be related to this file. Right. Do the people have any comment or? I, I think Ms. Smith's representation is accurate. This is an ongoing investigation. We have two cases that are currently charged in both Ingham County and Eaton County District Courts. Um, it's my understanding that the, the case in Mason will at some point be assigned to you if it is bound over. Um, the, there is some connection. Yes, and keeping in mind, I, as much as people might think, I have jurisdiction farther or I might like jurisdiction farther, I don't at this point. So, I'm restricted. I, whatever they do in Eaton County, they do in Eaton County. Mm -hmm. So, when we say no attempts by any lawyer representing a witness or a witness to facilitate the release of information or a statement, etc., in the public court file, I, I think we need to say related to this file. That's fine, Judge. Or this pending matter is what I'm going to put. Okay. Two, any statements released to any third party by a witness or any lawyer representing the witness must be a direct quote and without elaboration of a statement contained in a pleading which specifically cite that pleading and the courts in which it was filed. Again, I'm going to put related to this file. I guess I could have put one paragraph that said all above relates to this file only, but. When and if that other file comes forward, we may need some similar orders because each file is separate. So I may be seeing a lot of all of you or at least signing the same documents, I don't know. No statements by the witnesses or lawyers representing the witnesses shall discuss the guilt or innocence of Nasser. Publicly, they can do what they want privately. The lawyers will have to discuss whatever they need to. I can't restrict that, so it would be publicly. And This pertains to this docket only. No statements by the witnesses or lawyers representing the witness shall discuss 
or comment on the strengths or weaknesses of the case. Cases publicly. Again, that would be publicly and it pertains to this docket only. Because we don't want this case tried on social media. That completely obliterates innocent till proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt and the fairness to both sides. No witnesses or lawyers representing the witnesses shall comment as to the truthfulness of the lawyers involved in this case. Again, I'm adding the same. No witness or lawyers representing the witnesses shall vouch or comment on the credibility of the witnesses. I think the State Bar might have fun with that one, but I'll be happy to order that. And again, I will do that publicly. And this pertains to this docket only. Nasser shall be referred to by his name or as defendant. And I think that was because we want, the intent there is to stop the name calling because again, that goes into trying the case and having a mind set. So that's the intent of that. And that makes some sense. Do people agree? Yes? Okay. This order shall be binding upon all parties, all current and potential witnesses, and counsel for all current and potential witnesses related to this case. The problem is, and I know there's been other attorneys, the civil attorneys are doing their thing. First Amendment, I can't crush it. If it becomes a problem, we're going to deal with it on a case-by-case, -case, situation by situation basis. And if I have to put a gag order on somebody, I will do so individually. So bring them forward because they cannot interfere with this case if they want to trample on somebody's rights, the victim or the defendants, they're going to have to deal with this court. And we'll do it on a case-by-case -case basis in open court. I don't think they're going to be happy with the outcome. So bring it on. I think what we've done is define this further so it gives the order. My jurisdiction relates to this case and then any other subsequent files, if any, will do the same thing because we'll need subsequent orders. Anything else we need to add? The only other issue that's not addressed by this order is how the court would like to handle the transcript issue from this case. The transcript shall not, cannot be placed on social media. I had another case where it was an animal case, but somebody bought the transcript and then happened to put it on the internet. And it was devastating, not just for one side, but for both sides. And it took a long time to get it off the internet. It finally is. And that was also not paid for. That's the property of the court reporter. That's a violation of those rules. I don't know, isn't the written word speaking, hasn't this addressed it in a roundabout way? 
who still has a copy? Your Honor, I believe all of the civil lawyers have a copy. They circulated it by email somehow, and they all have it. Some of them have said they would destroy their copy, wait till further order of the court. Some have said they will never destroy their copy. Some have made indications that they're more afraid of what the other civil lawyers will do to them than they are of this court's order. We defer to the court. I just want to make sure the court's aware there are still copies of this transcript out there, illegal copies as the court called them. I think they are illegal. Actually, I know they are illegal right. copies. They were not paid for. Right. There's only one that was paid for. Technically, the preparer of that should send each of those lawyers a bill. We're just concerned because some of those lawyers have disseminated other materials to the media that would have never been placed in the media. And so we have grave concern because we can't trust some of the civil lawyers who are involved because of what they've already distributed. Well, do we have case law and my authority over that? That's my issue. That might have to be addressed at a later time in terms of the case law for me to do that because it's far reaching, further reaching than this, and it's over attorneys. I don't have jurisdiction over it yet, but they certainly have the state bar who governs them. They have a court reporter who is due a lot of money, apparently. She's lost money. Right. And, Your Honor, we are not asking the court to take jurisdiction or, or actions over those issues. I'm just pointing it out as a reason for this court to be more concerned with the transcript issue in this case. Well, I've given it a shot. Let's try this. The transcript of the preliminary examination shall not be distributed except for trial preparation and shall not be posted on social media or used for any purpose unrelated to trial or to interfere with the rights of the people and or defendant or to interfere with the ability to obtain a fair and impartial jury. And this applies to all subsequent transcripts and pleadings until further order of this court. Because the, 
nature of the case may change, and at some point everything may be fair game or the case is closed. I really, I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know how this will change. But right now, we need to move this case forward. We can't do that with all of this hoopla going on. We're not focused on the task at hand. When I say we, I really mean you, because I'm not doing any of the legwork. It's all in your part, not mine. Anything else we need to address? Is that okay? You'll receive a copy. Sure. This is what I said. It's going to work. If it doesn't, we can go back to the drawing board in a minute. Right, and I think there's the existing motion that you've already entered. Yes. Sealing it. So it's just that time it period between. Piggybacks. Right. Um, Your Honor, the defense is satisfied. We just want to make sure that we can leave here today with an order because, okay, thank you. Because as soon, the order. as soon as we filed our motion, there were about eight Facebook posts by one of the lawyers attacking us, and we're tired of it. So, thank you. I can't help what people will do on Facebook or Twitter or any of the other social media. I hope this helps. If not, I'm here every day. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That's all for this record. If you just wait a moment, we'll get you copies. How Thank many you so much. Do you need three? Three is great. Thank you. Three? That'd be fine. Thank you. the word document over to you guys so that you could make the edits. I just hand wrote them so you don't have to wait. Oh, it's perfect. Enough. It's not pretty, but it works. Awesome. Thank you. Thank Thanks. You. Thank you, Judge. Thanks. It's all for the record. Thank you. I oh, yeah, yeah. wait, wait, wait. You know what? Let's go back on for one minute. And I didn't get any of that because you said we were done and I ended it. So. I'm sorry. Let's go back on for one minute. Um, I have amended the order, so we're not going to uh, redo yours. We're just making copies. But second, you are all going to be sending this order to everybody involved, right? Yes. And that will continue to any new person involved. Or do I need to add that into the order? It just occurred to me. I think it's broad enough because the court was clear that it involves this case. And as those, those names comes up, we can file a proof of service with the court as okay. to who it was sent to and who's been put on notice. So a proof of service and any subsequent filings by either side, you'll send a proof of service to the court so we have an ongoing notice of who's been served just in case there is an issue. Is that acceptable? I, I, my understanding is you will be serving that on all of the parties, right, or all of the attorneys. That's We're going correct. to serve it on all the attorneys, but we don't believe that's right for us to contact the witnesses directly. So we would ask that any witnesses you guys have, you let them know about the order. I, I can notify the victims, yes, and the police department, yes. Um, witnesses, you. I'm not sure who they're just discussing. But, but it's, I, I want to make it clear, I'm not completely confident who's represented by which civil attorneys. I, I unfortunately read about the media as well, but we'll do our absolute best. But you do know who's related to this case. Yes. So to this case, because that's what this really is limited to, and then other people, as they become known, will receive notice. And so just do your proof of service, and then as you're exchanging that or sending that to each other, you'll keep a running list of who's been notified, and that should help not just the court, but all of you. And then if there's a problem, let me know. Okay? Thank, Thank you, Judge. Judge. Now that's all for the record. Thank you. They'll be out in a few minutes with copies. I don't do that.